Last time on Taking the Lunge. I am on the road pre pretty much every week. Uh, used to be even weekends and I stopped that. Work has been really crazy for me lately. I've been working like 105 hours a week or something like that. But on the road, you know, I'm checking off what exercises I did, whether I like them, uh, why this one doesn't work in a hotel room. Every workout can be tailored to the amount of time that you have. Time and duration shouldn't be an excuse. If you say, I only got 45 minutes to get a good workout in, well, that's plenty of time to, to definitely get a whole lot done. There is always that, oh, I could just go home today and I'll work out tomorrow. There's always that little voice in the back of your head and you have to, I have to fight that and say no. So you, you know, sooner or later, if you're serious about working out and serious about fitness, there's a, there's a certain time that you have to step it up. You know, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to, to work it sometimes, but you have to make it work. You have to make it work. This is the story of five people embarking on a unique fitness journey to achieve their individual goals for better health and wellness. Through the expert guidance of their own personal trainer, each is learning how to fit fitness into their everyday life and is taking the lunge toward a healthier lifestyle. This is pretty exciting. I, it's, I can tell the difference when I don't work out very much now. Like I can, I can really feel the difference because when we first started this, um, I was really gung-ho and I was working really hard and I was really excited about it and I was keeping really motivated and I was trying to do it like almost every day. And you know, there was like a week or two where I wasn't working out as much as I had originally started and I could immediately tell you know, the difference. Getting to the gym does help. Um, getting up in the morning and getting the gym out of the way helps quite a bit as well because I do want to work out and I find that if I don't go first thing in the morning it's hard to go at night because you've had the daily stress of the day and sometimes you just want to go home and uh, have a good meal and go to bed. And when I don't do that it affects my sleep, it affects my eating, it affects my mood and again because fitness has always been a big part of my life and I know the importance of it so to be able to have that in my life and be disciplined I can tell the difference between eating badly and eating well, exercising, not exercising, and how it affects me all, all the way around. I'm out of balance. For Pete's sake, I speak on balance. You can't afford to be out of balance. Exercise, I, I think, is so critically important. The five major killers in the U.S. are due to lifestyle problems, mostly a lack of activity. You know, as muscles shrink, body fat increases. So by making the muscles stronger, we can prevent many of the diseases and slow the aging process. So in essence, muscles are the fountain of youth, so don't be afraid of gaining muscle. I think I've mentioned before that my husband always says, you know, sometimes like, just please go work out because for every hour of workout that you get, we get two hours of happy Kathy. So just go and come back so we can have some, you know, like sort of relaxed time with me. I've had, you know, periods of a few days where I haven't exercised, I haven't been able to. I had a four-day period in Korea last week, for example. You know, I got off a 12-hour flight. We worked on a presentation until 2 a.m. I was up at 5:30 in a in a car to a client presentation. That went until 8 o'clock at night. And then I had a client dinner, and then we had to work again until 1 a.m. I mean, there are periods of time where you know I literally can't work out, and it sucks because it makes you feel like you know you don't have your life together. It goes beyond just looking better and feeling better. You're going to have more energy, of course, a stronger heart important for a long life. You want to lower your blood pressure, it's going to help with that too. It's going to help prevent diabetes because uh, it's going to control that, your blood sugar. It helps prevent osteoporosis because the stronger muscle puts more tension on the bones so it forces the bones to get stronger to keep up with the increase of strength. I love the feeling after I work out, my endorphins are released, I'm in a good mood, I feel like I've done something well for myself. Uh, I'm in control of my food. It feels like, you know, when I work out, I feel like I'm in control of my whole life again. When I'm working out and, I ha and I've uh, got a run in, my mood is better, you know, I'm more approachable. <laughs> no matter how busy you are or how many other things you might have going on that are going really well, if, at least for me, if I can't get my workouts in, I feel like I don't have control over my life. I feel like, you know, I just, I just don't have it all together. Some benefits of exercise are obviously you know, you feel better and you look better, but what's most important is it helps with anxiety levels and stress levels and you're able to 
do things easier than you were before. Just sometimes for some people it's something as simple as walking up the stairs and they're out of breath, but you know, it, you, it makes your daily life easier. With all of our labor-saving devices now, we don't uh, give our bodies an outlet and uh, it just didn't bottle up that stress, which is uh, very unhealthy. Another huge benefit of exercise is depression. Many studies have shown that exercise is just as effective at addressing depression as medication. You know, working out does help with the stress level. Definitely exercising, working out does help release my stress, which is one of the main points why I joined in the first place, because I felt that, you know, it's really about, it was for me about managing stress beyond the weight loss and the changes in my body and the being fitter for my family. It was about managing stress. Last week, I couldn't exercise, I ate horrible, it was my circumstances, and I felt disgusting, and I hate that feel. When you're, when you're not working out, and you're just under a lot of stress, like the littlest thing can, can, can bother you, you know? Somebody says your name the wrong way, it's like, what, you know? But, you know, when you're, when you're working out, and you know, it's like that feeling like, you know, I got this, I got this, I can hold this together, um, you know, it's, you're totally approaching life with like the glass half full, it's completely different. A lot of people think that the hardest exercises are something, you know, that they just don't like to do and um, they'd rather do something else, but really the hardest exercises are the best exercises. And you get more out of those exercises than doing something as simple as just a bicep curl. I, th I think my biggest, my biggest struggle is uh, my core still, things like that. Like so. Like sit-ups are really hard for me. The staggered push-ups are really hard for me. I, 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 I don't know why I can, I can do regular push-ups fairly well. I, mean, I, I did them well in my fit tests, even even before we started the program. I did well in the push-ups when I did okay. And staggered push-ups are really hard for me. I love just having the hands in different places, using different muscles. Okay, let me get this out of the way. I hate cardio. <laughs> I am so bored. Walking I love. I run on the treadmill for my workout. I do 20 minutes. I only love cardio if it's got something else other than just the boredom of cardio. You, uh, you're laying on the floor and you bring your legs 90 degrees and you sort of sweep your legs side to side. And that just for some reason like kills me. I hate burpees. I noticed they've been in my workouts recently. And I'll be honest with you, like I could do them, but they're just so ridiculous looking. I am not just going to stand there on my own, like jumping up and down and doing push-ups and jumping up and down. I mean, people would think I'm a puzzle with that. Like, I absolutely refuse to do that. So, if burpees show up in my workout, I didn't have no on set. So there, I just, I told you, I've been, I've been cheating a little bit. Jumping rope for two minutes straight, it's really hard for me. <laughs> it, it, everywhere I got the workout, I looked at it, I was like, okay, jump rope for two minutes. Okay, that'll be a great warm, that'll be a piece of cake. And, 30 seconds into it, I was looking at the watch going, we're not done yet? Oh my gosh. My back would be hurting when I was done with them, so I would start to use like the, uh, the ball um, to do sit-ups with, you know, because like it seemed like on the floor I was adding like pressure to it. So like those are still bothering me. Uh, the side plank, you know, after about 15 seconds I'm crying like a little girl, trying to get that done. I, I do force myself to keep going, even if I do slide down, I get right back up and, and complete it. But I kind of enjoy knee tugs. Right, when it's like an ab workout where you like um, sit on the ground and you like bring your knees in, so it's like an ab workout. If I'm doing cardio, for me it would be dancing. It's like the old funk class, it's me going out dancing, it's me taking dance classes. So watch how next time I tell you how Caitlin gave me the whole week, watch how she gives me the same exercise the whole week, just to punish me. Like if it was up for me, to me picking my workout, I would end up you know, probably doing the same three, four, or five exercises at the gym every time I go because, you know, A, they're efficient, you know, I know I can get in and out quickly, um, but B, probably because they're a little easier, you know? The other thing, and I think I've mentioned it before, I have the attention span of a P, so I hate repetition. So I, and I love change. So the fact that I get exercises one right after the other, Andrew's great at doing that for me. I'm sure it's a pain in the neck for him because it's, you know, giving me 20 different exercises instead of giving me five that I repeat three times. But I love change. Two or three ago, I was doing jump squats and jump lunges, which if you're doing those right, are really hard. I mean, you, you, you just, you, you, there's, no, there's no, if you, you, know, if you have a good pace and you're not resting in between and you're truly jumping, I'll be honest, I think toward the end of the 30 seconds, I was kind of, you know. 
um, truth be told, you know, there's only so many muscle groups you can work in your body. Um, and there are easier and harder exercises for those muscle groups. And if you're just focusing on the easier exercises and doing them all the time, you're really not getting much of a workout at all. You know, if I had my choice, I would just dance all the time, but I can't do that. So uh, having a great workout with uh, Andrew and Intertrain is really just perfect for my life right now. And you know what? We're cooped up so much during the winter months. A rooftop fit workout is the perfect way to get your fresh air in. Now, you guys have a few classes that you do up here on the rooftop, and a boot camp is one of them. So get us going, Lou. Let's go, baby. All right, all right. Yeah. Now, Lou, you guys have other classes up here on the rooftop besides the boot camp, including yoga. That's true. We have a yoga class. And we have our boot camp class up here. This is Thank why you so much this up. morning. I feel amped up already. I got a good breeze going through. <laughs> the weather is good. The air is fresh. And I'm going to continue to get my workout on. I'll see you guys later. Hi, I'm Chris Freitag, National Health and Fitness Expert. There are tons of whey protein products out there today. So why choose BiPro? BiPro is lactose-free. BiPro is flavorless. BiPro contains no artificial sweeteners. BiPro is an isolate. That means it has a higher purity level than a concentrate. BiPro is carb free. For more information, go to BiProUSA.com. Do you know what's in your energy ball? Martin. Maltod. Maltodix tribe. The skill of Briscoe life. Uh, Sino Balaman, huh? Raisins, honey, cherries, chocolate chips. If you can't say it, don't eat it. We've talked before in the show about the obesity ep epidemic, and it's, it's rampant in, in adults, but it's also rampant in children, you know, and that's, that scares me. That scares me. I have talked before that obesity runs in my family, that, that it, this is not something that I grew up doing, even though my mother really wanted me to be active, and, you know, in the way I was, that was, that was not supported by our lifestyle in, within my household growing up. Right? It was something that I did, but it was not something that was necessarily supported. I did not see my, my mom or my dad being active. When you first start an exercise program, you're just like, I hate this, I hurt, this is really hard, I could be doing other things, I'm going to you know, go to sleep. And I always see um, patterns as this sort of like the infinity symbol, right? The sort of looping eight, and there's like a kind of a negative side, and there's a positive side. And I believe that we spend most of our time like on that X part, right? Sort of transitioning between the positive and the negative. I believe that in this case, right, adding the workout piece and being part of this effort, right, just knowing that I have to do just one workout, get 20 minutes in, and then that's, I start moving in the positive direction. Well, I need to do another one. Well, I'm gonna type a show, you know, like people are watching. I'm starting to feel better. I feel, you know, healthier. I crave for more water, I'm getting more rest, and so there I am sort of starting to loop into the positive side of the cycle, you know, and so it doesn't happen overnight, but what is it that's important to you, and how do you sort of maintain that and make that part of your everyday cycle? So if you don't have 20 minutes for yourself, you really have to evaluate your life priorities, I believe, right? Because I mean, somewhere in there, you're kind of missing the point. If you don't prioritize yourself, you probably cannot get other things done. You cannot be the best self you can for the things that you want to accomplish. So I've been working with Kathy for the pat for the first half of taking the lunch. And the biggest thing with her is time management. Like I've said before, she's a mother, she's a wife, she works full time, and she's a full time student. So she is juggling a ton of things. And with her, it's time management to find that time for that she can you know, get a workout in real quick and not only just get it in, but get a good workout in and feel good about what she's doing and feel good about herself. For me, finding a routine where I can incorporate my family, so having a place where I, that actually has childcare, 
that my kids enjoy and we can go there and I literally time it, you know, like we have, there is one hour free parking and we literally go in and do what we need to do and we are out, 55 minutes tops, in and out. So I don't have, you know, one minute more, one minute less. The kids enjoy it and then we still get to go home and I can prepare a meal and put them to bed at a reasonable time. You know, three times a week we fit it in and we all go together as a family. We go for bike rides with our kids, we go for runs with our kids, we do our Father's Day tradition is this race that's called the Race Against Hate and it happens on Father's Day in Evanston and um, it's a very family oriented event. So our kids do it, there's like a youth mile that they've done, both Kaya and Ajani and Fizika, our, our older daughter as well. So I want my children to understand that this is who we are and I hope one day to race with my children, you know, to do a triathlon with my children, to, you know, maybe even dance with my daughter. So I want this to be, again, a legacy beyond me for our children, you know, a legacy for our community, that we can go to our community, you know, for me as a Latina, that I can go and, you know, be an inspiration or be a source of knowledge to other Latina women who may not see this as a possibility for them. Right? I, I also always say I feel privileged that I can run for leisure. Right? How many women in the world have that opportunity to run or to exercise for leisure? We are part of a, of a privileged minority. So I hope that, um, that my children can see that and they can incorporate it into their lives. But my biggest concern is that beyond going through that, even though you know, I work out, you know, I have a family history of diabetes, and I think I have mentioned that before. I still struggle with food, but, you know, little by little, I, I do feel myself like craving more protein and more water, carrying water with me at all times, right? Just reaching more for fruits versus like reaching for a pint of ice cream, which sounds really tempting right about now, but, <laughs> you know. She has said to me that she feels better, but she still does, isn't seeing the number on the scale that she wants. And the biggest thing with her is, that she's gaining muscle, and muscle's gonna weigh more than fat. So the weight on the, weight on the scale may not be as important, in, as important as to how she's feeling and the definition that she can actually visibly see in her, in her body. She's toning, her arms are getting stronger, her core is getting tighter, and not only does she feel better, but she also looks better. And we all know that exercise is not all it you have to combine it with proper nutrition. It is so important. You can exercise all you want, and I feel like I'm an example of that. That even though I am, you know, like relatively fit, I have certain goals, right? And I would like to look this way and you know, versus that way. And even though I can see my body changing, like I haven't dropped a pound. And part of that is because my diet is still the same. I haven't really changed that. And I think that even if I made some small changes, it will make a huge difference. And I can tell that just being able to fit a workout in, you know, two, three, four times a week really changes my mood tremendously. <laughs> and it makes, me, it makes me a better person, it makes me a better mother, a better worker, a better wife. Not necessarily in that order, but you know. And that's really important. A typical day off for a workout shouldn't just be you just sit on your butt on the couch all day and don't do anything. The biggest thing for a day off is to get up and walk around, be active, um, you know, take take the stairs instead of the elevator at work, walk around during lunch instead of just eat and sit down for a half hour. It's also important to do things such as stretching to keep your body ready for that next workout because if you're really sore and you don't stretch, that's not gonna that's gonna set you back a little bit in your next workout. You're not gonna be able to gain as much as you would if you were stretched out and you know those muscles were a little bit looser than as, as if you were just sitting around all day. I belong to a triathlon team that's called Team Dream. It's a women of color triathlon team that was um, started by um, visionary Derek Milligan, my husband, many years ago. And on Tuesday nights, we have this bike ride that um, leaves out of Trek on Michigan Avenue. and. The owner, Joanne McSweeney, is a great supporter of Team Dream and many other um, uh, cycling and triathlon groups. And she leads us in this bike ride from her store along the lake path through like Northerly Islands every Tuesday night. 
and it's just the same thing, a great way to get together with you know, a few friends after work just for an hour. And I mean, it's, it's, it's just great. It's a very supportive group of people. It's not, you know, this really hyped up competitive, you know, workout. It's just a nice ride among friends. And, you know, because we go to a loop eventually, it's like a couple of miles loop, you can go as fast or as slow as you want because we're all looping around and at the end we just all bike back together. If you, don't, if you cannot carve out 20 minutes a day to do something for yourself, to improve yourself, how do you expect to perform at your best, at your work, your family, you know, in your community? So I feel like that, that has been really powerful for me, sort of starting the cycle. 20 minutes of exercise, you know, it makes me sort of so if I do it in the morning, as much as I hate to get up early in the morning, you know, after I do it, I feel great. I go through my day feeling great. You know, I feel more alert. I feel a sense of clarity and groundedness. You know, I go through my day much more focused, right? I accomplish much more. At the end of the day, I feel tired. So, that, you know, my cycles are being regulated. Like, you know, all those things. I sleep better. And so it's all part of the positive cycle. I'm at O'Hare Airport in Chicago. I'm at Miami Beach now. I'm in front of the Bellagio Hotel in Las Vegas. I'm here on the beautiful island of Mauritius. I'm in Central Park here in New York City. Well, I need a change of scenery, I need a change of pace. And it's a workout that I can actually do anywhere, and I really appreciate that. The good of it is it, it, it makes you come back, it holds you accountable. Intertrain changed my life. I mean, it was just fantastic. Catalyst Ranch is a creative meetings and events space in the heart of Chicago's West Loop. Catalyst Ranch offers two floors and over 9,000 square feet of distinctive meeting and event spaces to delight your senses and spark your imagination. Catalyst Ranch is also the perfect place for a one-of-a-kind special event. Catalyst Ranch creates a customized experience for all. Visit Catalyst Ranch, waltz over here, and you'll jitterbug back. It's funny, like I'm actually learning to enjoy exercises that I used to hate because I'm better at doing them. I, I feel I'm definitely stronger. You know, I feel my arms are stronger. My legs are definitely a lot stronger than they were going into. And this is someone who has been doing spin classes and has been running, but it was doing the lunges, the squats, the leg presses that my trainer has been doing. It was a definite difference there. I love um, intervals in between my weight lifting. So if I'm doing something uh, with just weights and then I can do like a set of uh, an interval run for two minutes. I can handle that. Um, I, what I do is I'm running, um, I'm running about four to five times a week. Um, every other day it's a, a longer run. Like for example, like I could never do a pull up. I remember in like eighth grade we had a pull up bar and the boys and the girls were separated and the girls would just go for, you know, run or jog or something, but the boys we did these pull-up competitions, and I could never get myself up on the pull-up bar to do one. Uh, and I think for years I avoided subconsciously, like I avoided the pull-up bar because I, it, like, not only did I think like I couldn't do it, but like mentally I was sort of all screwed up. Like, oh God, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not good enough to be able to do this. And I realized though how um, how hard it is for me to create change around food. How with the right support, I have been able to reincorporate exercising and I figure out how to find the time to exercise, but I haven't done the same thing with food. When you're unhealthy and you're like making bad food choices and you're making, um, you know, you're not exercising regularly and, you know, it, it sounds like such a cliche because everyone's like, you know, every time there's, you have a health problem or every time, you know, anybody who's smart will say, well, are you exercising? Are you eating right? You know, and like, and I think that like as a society we're kind of like ignoring it you know we're not paying attention to it but it, when in reality it is so simple you know just to start exercising and just to eat right um and i think one day it was like one of my workouts and you know i literally had to go to the gym like late at night because i didn't want anybody to see me try to do a pull up and fail um and i was like wow like i i can actually get like three or four pull ups and i didn't think i would be able to do one and i think the result of that was just you know several years of you know working out and you know building up biceps but just mentally, I did not even think I'd be able to do pull-ups. So now when I see pull-ups in my workouts, like I just, I get really excited because like now I can do like 12, 
So I did my workout and it was, it was um, really good and I, I feel stronger. So even though my weight has not moved, <laughs> I feel stronger. Uh, arms and chest are also stronger. Uh, I think my abs are too if I could find them. <laughs> but we're working on that, right? We're getting rid of the, the layers of fat that are over the abs. So I think doing the bicycle and then the, the Russian twist and all the workouts that Julie's had me doing, I, I definitely feel a lot stronger. I feel more solid. Um, I think now is the time to really step it up. I, I think I'm about up to five miles right now. Like I run back and forth. And then some days it's a shorter run because I'll work out longer. So I try to give myself about an hour and a half to two hours a day. Uh, three to four times a week. I mean, it's been really good. I can I can tell that changes are happening. I feel comfortable wearing this dress. You know, I'm feeling comfortable. Like I'm thinking, oh, maybe I can get a two-piece for my vacation. Maybe not, but you know, I'm thinking about it. That's a good thing. <laughs> the workouts are getting harder, so I'll keep working harder, bring more calories while I'm working out, plus building more muscle, which burns more calories while I'm weight while I'm resting. Continue to eat better, continue to do some cardio, and uh, you know, in a month or so, when, when this is done, I hope that uh, I can definitely see a huge difference in um, a lot thinner uh, svelter, <laughs> and uh, I have more muscle definition in my chest, arms, and hopefully even maybe even see an ab or, or two. <laughs> of course, you know you're never like where you want to be. You know, I wish I was like you know. 80 pounds lighter, <laughs> but I feel great. Like, I feel really good. Well, FitAge is a fitness assessment program that motivates and inspires real change. At Intertrain, we use it to guide our clients through a series of physical tests, record the results, and then calculate that person's fitness age. FitAge results help you understand where you're doing well and where you can improve. For example, someone who just lifts weights but does not practice flexibility or cardio exercise will test well in the strength areas, but poorly in the other test. Or someone who is an avid runner or yoga enthusiast will probably test poorly in the strength, but high in the cardio or flexibility part. A good fitness program should be well-rounded, and the Intertrain Fit Test will show you just what you need to be working on to round out your program. Okay, so I did my second fit age, and I lost 11 years off my fit age, so that's pretty cool. I'm a happy camper. Thank you, Andrew. Thinking about it. 43. It's an improvement. 43. All right, we're almost there. Three more years, I'm at my actual age, and then four or better, I'll get to my goals. So, good. 48. So, what is that? Uh, last time it was 57. So, I'm 48. So, I spend, what is that, nine years? Is that math right? <laughs> oh, I'm now 33. <laughs> Are you sure that's because I didn't, maybe it's because I didn't put in the chin up? That's five years younger. Nice. So, that's good, right? I'm a little disappointed with my body fat, but I've told you all that my problem is food, so I can't expect anything different, right? What's Einstein's definition of insanity? Even the same thing over and over and expect a different result. So I need to get my food together. Nine years, I got nine years off of my age. So at this rate, if I do another nine years, I'll be 180. No. <laughs> so I'm doing better. I'm doing better. So I'm 37, so I'm still 11 years too much. But it's still more of an improvement than 57. Hey, I, yeah. hit my, I hit my annual 30th birthday mark. Because my birthday was this week on July 4th, and I said it was my annual 30th, and I'm 30. Yes. 24. Booyah! <laughs> Bitch, I beat out all you young kids doing this whole thing with me. Ha <laughs> ha!